Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to JFD Trader C Time with me, Titus Lontrauskas. Today is the 30th of March 2020, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Monday's um, afternoon recording, recorded session. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so also just before we jump in, a quick mentioning of our JFD uh, YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page which we update on a daily basis as well. So yep, uh, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there. And I believe you can find some useful information here guys. So now then, a uh, quick update on what's happening here. So this, these are numbers from the morning. So I'll just quickly refresh this page and see. Um, of course, we have uh, the number has grown, but that's the big question is for how by how much. Um, Okay, so we're still kind of holding in there. Um, still, didn't. It seems that it's it's slightly on the slower side, so that's good. Um, but yeah, I mean, this this problem is not gonna uh, disappear very quickly. So most likely, uh, we will be hitting uh, a million a million number here, and uh, by probably by the end of this week. But of course, this is I, I hope not. I hope these projections uh, don't come true. But um, yeah, um, it seems it seems that for now. That's something that we have to live with. Um, right, now then, let's jump into the charts. Now, the first one I want to touch on here is the German DAX. Now, looking at this picture here, uh, this morning I talked about this one and basically what I was saying that in a way we're just basically sit, sitting this uh, and waiting uh, until this will um, uh, move either way here, either um, break through the uh, 10,280 zone here or uh, uh, drops below the 9,140 territory. So in a way for now we're, uh, like I said, we're not really kind of doing anything here. Uh, because although it is uh, the index is below this downside line taken from the high of the 20th of February still um, we need some sort of a clear break here through one of the uh, re resistance and support levels or support levels um, because for now even let's say if it uh, let's say breaks this this downside line given that there's like not really much activity right now is just kind of moving sideways a little bit here um, so uh, then we could start ignoring this downside line for now we'll keep this on the chart uh, but our main focus is here on the 9140 zone and then 10280 zone I've mentioned this these two I spoke about these um, in my morning video you can always have a look at that one as well, just to have a quick uh, refresh. Um, but yeah, that's for now. We're just like I said, uh, I would even say somewhat neutral, although we are below this downside line, but we are probably somewhat neutral here for now. Yep. So keep your eyes on these two levels. Um, the S&P 500. Now here, uh, the situation is also a little bit tricky because um, I looked at this one previously, or should I say last week, and basically what I was talking about, I was talking about these two levels here. So um, the uh, 2,637, which is the high of the 26th of March, and the um, this level here, the 2,453-54 zone, which as you can see uh, acted as a good area of resistance back here on the 18th and the 20th of March. Um, 
So in a way we need to see a clear breakthrough one of those before kind of considering a further directional move and uh, in, in a way if we do see a breakthrough one of these, one of these so um, let's say if we see a drop below the 2454 zone um, this of course would automatically place the, mm, the index back below this uh, long term upside support line and let me just show you what I'm talking about. Um, I spoke about this one last week and this upside line is taken from the lowest point of October 2011 or in other words, the lowest point of 2011. Um, so yeah, um, for now, guys, the, the main thing to watch, of course, is um, the monthly candle. Um, we do have two days left of trading in this month. And what I was talking about uh, previously in around mid-month uh, was that we would like to see how and where this will close this monthly candle will close because if it stays above this upside line then there is a bit of hope we could see the market rebounding here and maybe traveling back up here for maybe a, for a larger correction uh, back to the uh, 3000s um, but again if by any chance this closes below this upside line then well I mean this is not looking good here for uh, for the S&P 500 and for the markets in general and uh, yep, we could see this one uh, drifting south. However, for now, it, it, we are kind of stuck in limbo a little bit, I would say. Um, looking at the cash index right now, we are seeing that the price is currently around the 5,000 um, <clears throat> 5,557 zone roughly around there. Um, so yeah, guys, for now, basically that's around here is 2,557 so it's roughly around here basically we're still below this downside line taken from the high of the 20th of February so in a way we need that break here uh, first of course break of this downside line and then a push above the uh, 2,637 as a mark and then yep we could aim for higher levels uh, again we cannot really do much here and uh, until we get that break either through the 2637 or a drop below the 2454 mark so keep your eyes on that one uh wti oil so um i've looked at this one this morning and uh just a quick update i mean not much has changed here um still basically flirting with that psychological 20 zone uh, it did get a, dr a drift lower brief kind of overshoot but uh yeah kind of stayed back it drifted back uh and kind of back up and uh, yep it's currently balancing around here so long story short um still the same game plan remains uh we need to see a nice good uh, firm move lower here and ideally what you could do here is keep your keep your eyes on today's candle and today's daily candle and if we do see uh the commodity staying and closing the daily candle below this territory below that psychological 20 zone then yep uh, it could give a bit of hope for the bears uh, that we uh, that the the commodity could drift a lower soon. So, in other words, if we look at the the monthly chart here, yes, if we see a drop below this, then the next potential target for us is, of course, the lowest point of 2001, and that's uh, and that's roughly around uh, 17. 17.12 15 zone or approximately around there so 17.12 that could be our next target um, again for now coming back to this you can see that um, the uh, the commodity is kind of like I said still flirting with that 20 mark but uh, let's see how this is gonna play out it's gonna be quite an interesting uh, period here right now um, so let's try to kind of um, see what we can do with it for now um, if this area continues to hold if we see a daily candle closing above this uh, tw uh, 20 mark then, well, I mean, it will remain somewhat neutral for now because for us to consider some higher levels, uh, well, um, of course, we would like to see uh, a push back above the 26.08 level. That's basically the lowest point of 2016. And uh, then, yep, from there, we will aim for higher levels. So, yep, guys, for now, be very careful and very, very cautious. We are at extraordinary times. Uh, gold. 
gold uh, I looked at this one last week and uh, basically what I was talking about that we needed a nice good push above the 1643 zone that was the highest point of last week if I'm not mistaken let me just uh, no that's not the highest point of last week last the highest point of last week is around the uh, 1645 zone so in other words yep we can keep an eye on this on this barrier so not far from that the previous one that I talked about that was the high of 25th of March but on the 26th we've managed to reach uh, the area slightly above that so 1645.50 uh, if you want to be more precise uh, that's what we're going to be uh, looking at in order to aim for higher levels um, now, uh, last week I spoke about this and I was saying that we will keep a close eye on the monthly candle because um, this is basically the highest point of March, this one right here around the 1703 zone. Um, uh, the idea was here that if with this rally here we were thinking that it might continue pushing higher, it may even uh, recapture all of its losses made in the first half of the month, uh, but as you can see uh, the, um, the commodity the precious metal is kind of stuck here right now and to be honest uh, the way everything's shaping up right now unless tomorrow it's going to be uh, a huge spike to the upside here uh, we're not really seeing this one even uh, closing in the at least in the at least a little bit in the positive territory so uh, probably will end up the mm, the month somewhere around here um, so in a way, how we could look at this one from the short-term perspective in terms of the downside. Now, if we see a drop, good drop below the 1611 territory, which is the inside swing high of the 2nd of March, uh, then yes, we, we will aim for a bit of uh, correction to the downside here. Uh, we will aim for some some of these levels, but uh, yeah, for now, it's, it's like I said, it's stuck here and uh, it's not really doing anything. So that's why we're, uh, we're waiting for a clear break through one of these levels ideally we would like to see a daily close this is by the way a daily candle so if one of, if this candle if one of these candles gonna gonna close either above the 1645 zone or the six or it closes below the 1611 then yep we could consider a further directional move in the very very short term because even if it drops lower here below the 1611 it could drift a little bit to the downside however this is a very strong area of support as you can see by the arrow uh, this could be a nice uh, potential uh, rebound place here for uh, for gold and then we could see a nice push to the upside uh, in order for us to become bearish again quite bearish uh, we would need to see a break of this upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 22nd of uh, is that 22nd of May yep and then uh, and then a drop below the 1547 territory uh, and only then like I said we, we could aim for lower areas for now any move lower could be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of buying so keep your eyes on this one now then uh, US dollar against the Turkish Lira so uh, this one is popping higher today as you can see so last week uh, we did get a bit of a decline but this week it's uh, it's popping higher again let me just quickly put him uh, not a monthly chart but a weekly chart so as you can see we are getting close to these uh, levels that we saw in August during that uh, kind of crazy period for the Turkish Lira and the Turkish economy uh, in, in August 2018 um, where the, the Turkish Lira strongly devalued devalued against all of its major currencies uh, major counterparts um, and you can see that we are actually slowly but close, slowly and getting back to these levels again. So, in other words, uh, when it was considered here a nice, a strong kind of spike here, and it was it was mayhem in the markets, especially in the Turkish market. Um, now that the fact that we just gradually kind of got back to this these same levels, um, it's all kind of okay-ish I would say but um, of course don't get me wrong the uh, the Turkish Central Bank will be intervening probably again soon um, and um 
yeah, for now, um, he, it's not really looking good here for the Turkish lira um, against the US dollar and, to be honest, the euro as well. Uh, but from the technical perspective, what we're going to do here is we're going to keep an eye on the high of uh, last week here. Now, this high of last week is around the 6.6090 zone, so approximately around there. So in a way, what we're going to do here is we're going to keep an eye on this one. If it pops above this then yes, uh, we will aim uh, for the upside again. Uh, we will aim for some further further acceleration to the upside. Um, and uh, this, of course, would confirm a forthcoming higher high and maybe more buyers could join in here. However, for now, it's a very tricky situation. We are still below this key resistance level. Um, and uh, in a way, it could what it could do, it could overshoot it. Um, and then close the daily candle below it and then reverse to the downside. So basically this way a lot of uh, traders could get stopped out. So that's why ideally we would prefer to see maybe a daily close above this above this barrier first and then uh, we could aim for further uh, for a further move higher. The next potential target to consider, of course, if that happens, if it travels higher, is, is the 6.8396 zone, roughly around there. That's the, the high of... <clears throat> Uh, the high of the 30th of August uh, 2018. So, yep, guys, something to look forward to, something to keep an eye on. Um, but again, like I said, only if we get a nice good uh, close, a daily close above the 60.6090 territory. In terms of the downside, uh, we would get a little bit more bearish if uh, we would see a drop below this little territory here, uh, below the 6.3765. And then, yep, we could see this one drifting uh, lower. However, we should still remember that uh, we are uh, trading above some of these tentative upside lines, which could in a way provide support. So, yep. Um, that's why we'll be very careful here and uh, we'll we'll go slowly if uh, we see that drop below the 6.3765. NZDJPY, so this is quite an interesting one. So overall, that's the picture. Overall, of course, we are still on a downtrend. Uh, we're trading below this downside line taken from the 17th of January this year. Uh, recently, we, as you can see, we have broken this other steep downside line and uh, now the, uh, the pair kind of is trying to climb back here um, looking at the four hour chart you can see this one clearly but what I wanted to show you here but this is probably going to be more useful from the uh, very short term perspective now um, we are what we what we have here is we are seeing that the pair is uh, coiling up a little bit here. So uh, probably it would be easier to watch even on the one hour chart. Um, now these uh, tend to be quite interesting, these moves here, uh, because the pair is, uh, like I said, coiling up. It's getting it's getting into a squeeze here a little bit. So in a way, what we're waiting here for a break uh, through one of the sides before we could consider a further directional move. Um, of course, don't get me wrong, the preva prevailing short-term trend is to the upside. Um, so in a way, it has a good chance to push higher. However, um, this is going to be very interesting here because the markets are stuck right now as well and also thinking what to do um, and I'm talking about the equity markets mm, if the if the equity market starts popping uh, if if they start popping higher uh, then in a way of course uh, every investors will be moving out of the Japanese yen and uh, going into something more risky and this is where the um, commodity linked uh, cur currencies like the New Zealand dollar uh, an Australian dollar could uh, kind of benefit from that. And in this situation here, it, this would be a perfect situation, whereas because, uh, like I said, investors would be also moving out of uh, the Japanese yen, uh, which is considered to be as a safe haven. And uh, that's why this pair could pop a little bit higher. However, let's not forget that this pop higher could still be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of selling. So in a way, uh, anything up until this downside line here could still be seen as a temporary correction. Um, so yep, guys, uh, like I said, this is the um, this, this is the NZDJPY. Like I said, a very interesting setup here. I do like myself this, these setups, and uh, but in order to kind of consider um, a, uh, let's say, a, f a, f a further 
further directional move in this particular scenario uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to keep an eye on this little territory around the 65.4650 zone um, pr approximately around there and uh, if we do get a pop above that then yes of course at the same time we would already understand that the uh, rate would be above the uh, upper side of this uh, triangle and the uh, higher levels could be met um, in terms of the downside pretty straightforward as well if we see a break of this little territory right here um, this would of course also automatically drop below the uh, the low here and let me just zoom in here a little bit this would drop below the low of the 30th of March um, and uh, well today basically to the the lowest point of today um, and at the same time it would also break the the lower side of the um, of this triangle and it would also break the 200 EMA here on the one hour chart so in a way uh, a lot of negativity here could come in and uh, yep in, in investors could start uh, kind of or should I say the bears could start uh, jumping in here and driving this one lower at least towards the zero point uh, the 63 point eighty one eighty two zone here which is the low lowest point of uh, 26th of March or even could go further however for now let's keep an eye on this one and like I said we are keeping a close eye on these uh, two uh, sides here of the triangle and uh, waiting for a break of one of those uh, GBP euro now uh, I've looked at this one last week and this is what I was talking about so basically uh, given I was saying that if we get a nice good break above this and we see if at least a four hour candle staying above this territory then above this uh, 1.1110 then yes we we could aim for higher levels um and the, uh, by higher levels what i meant was the 1.1305 territory so as you can see uh the mm, uh, the the pair now is aiming for that um most likely we will reach that area here um and uh, that's basically around the uh 200 ema here on the four hour chart so yep guys uh for now keep your eyes on this one could be quite interesting and if we do reach this area then we'll take it from there because don't get me wrong we may see a bit of a correction here and then maybe another round of buying again so yep keep your eyes on this uh, finally euro usd so um, here I talked about this one this morning and what I was saying that if we see a four hour candle closing below this 1.1087 territory then yes we will aim for lower levels uh, but we will only aim for the this area right here around the uh, the 200 EMA the 100 EMA on the four hour chart um, or even this still kind of the last resort here for the bulls to step in could be this upside support line taken from the low the 22nd of March so um, you can see that we are yes on the right track right now um, but now the big question here is will this all this territory will it hold because if it fails if this if, if this upside line starts getting uh, it starts breaking then well I mean uh, we could consider further declines here to the downside um, and uh, but still for us to get comfortable with lower levels we need to see a drop below the 1.0952 territory which is the low of the 27th of March here and uh, then yep we could aim for further declines for now uh, it's moving lower yes but it's approaching a very key area of support here near all of these EMAs here and this upside support line as well but if those fa all of these fail and the rate falls below the 1.0952 then yes we will consider deeper extensions to the downside for now we're cautiously bullish okay guys I really hope you found it useful Thank you very much for sticking around and watching it till the end. And uh, yep, guys, uh, like I said, thank you very much for your comments, for your uh, for your support, for your likes, for your views. And uh, yes, like I said, if you do, by, by the way, if you do would would like me to cover a certain instrument, um, then please leave. Uh, a message um, after the video is uploaded and uh, yep in the comment box and just I'll pick up on that and uh, yeah like I said if you if there is something that you would like me to cover specific then um, I'll try to do so um, but yeah guys thank you very much for sticking around and watching until the end and I will see you tomorrow catch my video tomorrow at my uh, at around um, six o'clock uh, GMT time uh, yes so around six o'clock GMT time so yep catch, catch me catch my video then and uh, yep we'll pick up on some of these instruments and some new ones as well thank you very much and bye-bye